closed system. Right. Now, we can accomplish that several ways. Those tremendous differences in temperatures have got to happen in a very short distance on this short stroke motor. Right. And very intensely on the other end. Therefore, we have got to know how to apply maximum heat to these transfer cylinders on this end while at the same time applying cooling efficiency on this end. You're swishing hot air back and forth between the power piston and the transfer cylinder. On this particular model, we're, we have the options of a two or four burner engine available. Uh, the fourth torch is going to give you your RPM factor. You're going to get more R's with more heat. And sir, tell us, sir, tell us a little bit about just the overall design. Uh, explain the liquid cooling system as opposed to the uh, air-cooled system that the uh, previous models featured. Tell us a little bit about that and how that complements the, uh, the the overall physics of the machine. What's happening? to, Jim. One of the most important factors on this particular model is cooling of the base and the, the cylinder with a liquid cooling system. We found it to be the most efficient cooling system we have, and there are a lot of options as to your... And it, it appears you have snow in there, so the snow is contributing. Ice is, uh, now, run us through this, Jim. Is is the water being sucked up by the pump through this tube here, In the valve goes through, and it separates to the two separate coils, and the coils appear to be going through, and come right back around. R run us through that, Jim. I'll... Yeah, you've got it basically. Technically, the pump is actually pushing the water. Oh, okay. It comes up from our coolant tank into the, our safety valve, or rather our co flow control valve here, which in this case we're running the wide open. <laughs> Up to the T where the water divides to go to both sides right. of our cooling coils. And, and and would you say that the snow that we've been adding here to the to the cooling system, would you say that that's added performance? Always. Anything you can do to increase the differential between your hot side and your cold side is going to make an essential difference in the performance of your engine. Thanks, Jim. Tell us a little bit about just the, all the work that went into this thing. Well, you know... I mean, what, what did it take? It's a in our job, we, well, what we did, we tried to... We weren't up against a deadline, and so... We tried to be most economical on our material that we used in this project. Well, Jim, give us an overall assessment of uh, of the machine. What do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts? What would you like to improve? What would you do different? What doesn't need anything? Overall, I'm quite satisfied with the results of the project. I hadn't expected it to operate so well the first time out. <laughs> that, that is, I'm surprised we didn't have to do some minor rebuilding. Minor machine readjustments, but uh, uh, Jim and I, we uh, tweaked her in at the last minute to get her on her maiden voyage, and surprisingly, 
It only took a half a turn of our flywheel, and she fired it right up. So we're pretty happy. Now we're trying to tweak her in further by increasing the differential between pulling in and our high end. <laughs> so we're going to super cool in this experiment. <laughs> Well, well, Jim, you know what? We we are just tickled to death that you've uh, decided to share this with it. it. It appears that somebody's contaminated the cooling system. Um, but that's going to have to be a matter for another day. Folks, this is Jim Marunik uh, signing off. It's been a wonderful report, and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Marunik for being here with us to film film this uh, monumental event. Uh, any any parting words for the audience, Jim? Always a pleasure to be with you, Jim. <laughs> and we'll see you next week.